Hey guys, it's Hovik, and today I got another tu another tutorial for you guys. Stutter at the very beginning, um, and it's been requested by a couple people, and it's just how uh, it's taking your animations from Endorphin. Well, it's, people have asked for how I do my 3D animation, but I'm just gonna show you how to do like the simple animations that are there for you uh, using Endorphin in Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna take the animations we're gonna make in Endorphin, and I'm gonna put them in a Cinema 4D, and we're gonna add them to our character and we're gonna make the whole animation so we'll start off uh, by using endorphin 2.5.2 so if you don't have that you need to get that I'm just gonna open it up close that okay for usually when you're like animating COD characters you wanna do a character 2 so I would go ahead and click on that and click delete and go up to this little sign it's an add character sign so you click add and you want to do an audio motion 2 character because those work best with COD characters but you can also use them with other type of characters like uh, in my evil edit I used a uh, weird guy from Borderlands or whatever and it still worked for him so click OK so now you have your audio motion 2 character right here but you don't have the animation so what you want to do is you want to right click in this area down here next to him and then do go up to create animation event then you're gonna go to your um, you're gonna have your audio motion if it takes you to the endorphin you go to resources and then you can go to animation and then you go to audio motion 2 or 1 it doesn't matter even though you're using audio motion 2 character you can also go to the first one and use their their uh, animation so we're just gonna do a walking thing for now so we're gonna find walk and we're gonna click it and click open and now this is important you need to check this thing right here audio auto motion transfer source reference character click that and then click the dot line and select your character that you use which is auto motion 2 so now that we have that we click OK and it's gonna load the animation up okay so now we have the whole animation up here but before it actually does anything we have to simulate the event so it pretty much I don't know I guess it's a way of rendering it out or whatever so you click down here at this sign down here it's called simulate it's just gonna simulate through the whole thing and you're gonna see the guy walking and you can just stop it whenever you want which is the same button and it's now okay now you can scroll through the thing with this button right here you can just scroll through it and you have your animation right here so now uh, what we can do once we have that we're pretty much done with endorphin now we just need to export it into a file so we can open it up in sim 40 so we're gonna go file export all and the first thing we're going to do is go down to save as type and we're going to change it to a BVH file. Now you can save it to wherever you want. You can save it to your desktop and call it walk animation or whatever you want. But I already have one saved on my desktop so I'm just going to uh, use that one. So you guys just choose a file name and click save. Okay. So that's it for endorphin so I'm just going to go ahead and close that down. New. Okay now we're going to open up our animation in Snow 40 so uh, let me see, I have Dorfin animations. Wait, what? I need to. Whoops. Okay, I need to open that up in a different. First, here, I made a mistake. First, you need to open up Cinema 4D. I'm used to opening up other different different files that will open Cinema 4D with it, but it's my mistake. So just open up your R12, R13, whatever you have. I use the latest one. Okay, now you have your your Cinema 4D open, so you're gonna want to open up your file. So you're gonna do file open, and that's just some uh, textures I have. So you can go to desktop, and you can go to find your animation or wherever you saved it to. I I, I saved mine on desktop, so and you go to Endorphin Animations, walk, open, and you just want to save it by one. Uh, I messed around. It's already at 1.35 because I've done other characters in different sizes. So now you have your character open, and if you scroll, make this go all the way over there. If you scroll through, you can see him walking. But first, we need to go back to the beginning, and we're going to bind the character with the skeleton. So now we're going to merge, and we're going to find your model. You're going to uh, you guys probably already have your model you want to use. So uh, we're I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and find mine. I'm just gonna use for the tutorial. I'm just gonna use this uh, USMC sniper from COD4. 
So now you see if you render it out, it's all black, but I need to fix the texture, so let me go into load image desktop editing. I think I can just use these textures that will work. Okay, I'm just gonna select, you just go in and select the texture you want, so I'm gonna click open, nope. Okay, and now go into here, and this one's gonna be t uh, called USMC Tactical Baseball Cap, so I'm gonna go ahead and load it, and find the cap, which is right there. Click no, and then we're gonna go into here, <coughs> and click load image, and it's this one's gonna be called body, so we're gonna click load, and this one, will be called accessories so we're gonna go ahead and load the image called that's called accessories which is right there okay, so now we have the whole character in here okay so now I actually made a big mistake before I uh actually it's not that big of a mistake that you see how the skeletons bigger than the um like kinda it needs to be a little bit smaller so we can go ahead and uh, actually, I guess I can just go ahead and delete the skeleton and then reopen. You're going to want to do file merge, and if it doesn't fit, you go file merge and find your walking animation or whatever you have. <clears throat> and we're going to reopen it. Walk. And before it was too big, so let's do like 0 0.95. And that seems to work fine. 0 0.95 fits them perfectly. So we're good. You can do that with the. You can also do that uh, with the mesh. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So now we have him, and we want to bind the skeleton to the character. But before we do that, we need to match him up perfectly. Because right now you can see it doesn't match up, and like right there. So we can have the skeleton select it. We're gonna drag that to the bottom. We can have the skeleton select it. And we can select the rotation tool, and we're gonna drag that forward like that. And we're gonna take this and slide it back, just so we can get a nice fit see if that looks good okay we still need to we need to drag it back a little bit more or actually we can just rotate it yeah, that seems to work okay now it's matched up oh yeah if you have a character that's not a t-pose like this um, you can you can also just take the the arm so if you open up the skeleton it has all the different uh, joints so say the legs didn't match or the arms were like down you could go keep on opening up this one and find the it's like a right and left clavicle and that will open up the shoulder joints and you can just take those and rotate them and then go to the elbow joint if you open this open up the elbow joint and rotate that and just keep on doing it until it matches up with the character that might not be in a t-pose but I'm not going to do that because it will just mess up. Okay, so now that we have it matched up with the character, all we need to do is add a skin. So we're going to go to MoGraph, wait, character, and we're going to select skin, and we're going to put that, we're going to put that on top of the sniper polygon. So now what we want to do is we're going to bind the character. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click skeleton and select all children, select children. And we're gonna hold control, select the skin, and then hold control. Keep on holding control and select the USM sniper. So now we're gonna go up to character, and we're gonna go to, to commands. I, it might be somewhere a little bit different for um, if you have R12, it might be down here or something. But just try to find it, and then you're gonna go to commands, bind, and now they're jointed together. So when the skeleton moves in the animation, the character will too. So you see right here, he's moving. So that's pretty much it. Sometimes you'll get a little bit morphine and then you can't really help that. You can keep on trying to move the joints around before you bind them like to make it I guess not warp or morph because sometimes like you can see right here some of his pouch stuff gets a little bit messed up but another way I like to avoid that is uh, sometimes when you have a model instead of just having one layer of a polygon you'll have a bunch of different layers of all different types of his um, a bunch of different types of like it will have a layer for his vest, a layer for his shoes or whatever, have a big list and I like to delete the ones that are like maybe this magazine pouches because those just usually cause problems with morphine and stuff.
and warping and everything so I like to delete those and whenever you have just the ones you need it will have like a lot of layers here you just select them all and then right click and do connect plus delete and that's how you do it if you get a model that has a bunch of different layers so that's pretty much it and you can also uh, you can also actually I should probably show you how you can animate this onto a onto a map or something so okay let's get a map in here uh, what am I doing we can make a new a new material by double clicking down there and do load image whoops I'm just messing up right now do load image and I'm just gonna go and find maybe a thing I still images and I'll just I guess use a, one of these pictures okay so now we can just do click this and make a background and then drag this texture onto the background and now you see you have the background back there and we'll change the dimensions by going into the settings and we'll do 12 1280 by 720 and 30 frames per second is fine and then you can also make it 0 to uh, 200 or however long your animation is okay so now we can just scroll back this works if you have a 3d uh, a 3D motion track cinematic too. You can uh, merge that into the thing too whenever you're making your animation. But we're just gonna use a still image. So we're just gonna drag him to where we want him to be. And right now he doesn't have a shadow. He looks kind of like he's not actually in the thing. So we can fix this. Fix this by either creating. We can create a floor, and then hold Control, click on this texture from the background, and drag it up, and then let go, and it will make the texture on the floor. But as you can see, it's darker than everything else. So you're going to right click the floor, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and click Compositing. And then click Composite Background and uncheck Self Shadowing. So now when you do it, everything's the same color. But now that's just the floor. Now, if you want to make a shadow from like a sun or something, you can make a light. And you could just, I don't know, drag it where you want. And then you can go and click on the light and go into the shadow settings and click Soft soft and you can you can make the density whatever you want depends on you just gotta keep on previewing it until it looks good so right there you can see the shadow and it doesn't look like his feet are touching so sometimes the floor won't be touching his feet so you can click down on your on your uh, scrolling wheel on your mouse and you can click that down and you can go into a different view and I like to go into the right view so we can see the floor so right now the floor is way below his feet so we can just drag that up so it's right on top of his feet and we can sometimes it's like at an angle so let's scroll through it yeah he walks kinda downwards so we can uh, take the floor have the floor selected and rotate it so it we can just rotate it so it, it's right under his feet so now we can just pull that down actually and I'm not gonna mess with it like it's not I'm not gonna make it perfect you guys can just mess with it and make it look good so that his feet will be touching the ground it'll look more realistic and and if it's an inside shot it won't actually have like a light in there and so it's not gonna make a big shadow you can also just go into your render settings and do effects and then you can go to ambient inclusion and make the minimum whoops I don't know what I just did you can make the minimum ray length like 10 you can make the contrast like 10 and it will make the character not only the character look more realistic with more texturing on himself uh, let's just take the light out it'll make the character have more texturing on himself as you can see but it will also make right under his feet with the floor have like a little bit of shadow right there you can see so I don't know it just makes it when you're inside it's not gonna have a big shadow but when you put your feet on the ground it's also gonna make a darker space under your feet so that adds a little bit more realism to it so that's pretty much it guys I hope you enjoyed um, please like and comment if you have any questions. Well, like if you like to put comment if you have any questions, and any requests for new tutorials. I'm gonna try to make a tutorial every two weeks and edit every two weeks, so it's kind of like one video a week because I want to start being more consistent. And look out for an edit that's gonna be out in like a week after this is posted. And I'll see you guys later.